here's the deal. It's real, okay? Can we get past that part of it? It's really real. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates 2, Reds 0. Pirates win their seventh in a row. Pirates sweep a series for the third time already. It's the third week of April. Pirates move into first place in the Central, thanks to the Brewers losing. Pirates move into the top spot of the National League's overall standings. Pirates move into the second spot of Major League Baseball's overall standings with only the ridiculous Rays in front of them. Pirates off to their best start since the last time they won a division title. And yes, that goes all the way back to 1992. I'm really, really losing the gusto to discuss whether or not it's real. If you want to reach, and there are certainly going to be people who do that, there's going to be cynics and skeptics, and why wouldn't there be? I mean, they're coming off of 201 losses over the last two years unquestionably the major's worst team over the past three seasons. Why wouldn't there be doubts? But I'm going to say this, and I mean this. If you took this same group of players, same manager, same coaches, same everything, and you just put a different uniform on them, not a soul anywhere would be surprised. Jerry Seinfeld used to make a joke about how we're rooting for laundry as sports fans, that that's what we're doing. We're rooting for laundry. And you know what? He's actually kind of right if you think about it. It's always about the jersey or the sweater or the helmet. That's that's who you're pulling for. And that's who you identify teams with. Now, there are characteristics. There are traits that come to be associated with those teams. And those are good and bad, and they do tend to be perpetuated over time. You can say that over a very long span of baseball history that the St. Louis Cardinals have been identified with solid fundamentals and, and that sort of stuff. And, okay, that's viable. You can look at a player and say, well, he's a Cardinals type of player. Or he's a Twins type of player. Remember when the Minnesota Twins were the gold standard? In the American League, now you hear that sort of thing about Tampa Bay. Where the Pirates are concerned, they are exactly who they are and who they've been ever since 1992, with the exception of three wonderful years about a decade ago. That's it. That's it. So I, I get that. I get that. But I also understand, A, from watching this team as you are, and B, from being inside the clubhouse, that this is different. This is not the same group from last year. You can go right around the, the room, count the bodies, list the names, check off how many were here last year, how many stayed. And from there, go back to 2022 and look at the people they replaced. In a lot of cases, they went from zero to 60 on the road, okay? Zero to 60, pedal to the metal. I mean, just take the shortcut. Just look at the rotation. And look at the fact that your holdovers are Mitch Keller, Rowanzi Contreras. I wouldn't consider Johan Oviedo to be one because he came so late in the season. The Cardinals had used him as a bullpen guy, and we're just now seeing him start to blossom. So he's basically new. Rich Hill is new. Vince Velasquez, who was out freaking standing. The game I covered yesterday had a dominant slider. Seven zeros up on the board. He's new. Okay, that's 60% of your rotation. You want to keep doing this? It's just a different team. They have the same laundry, but it's a different team. It's also extraordinarily different when it comes to what's beating on the inside. And that begins, I believe, with Carlos Santana. You're going to hear a lot of people talk about Kutch. Nobody respects Kutch more than I do, but Kutch himself 
will be the first to tell you he's got no interest in being anybody's leader. That's not his thing. He actually repeated it just in the past week. Santana does. Santana's the guy who busted it to have the infield single, then stole second, and then scored on Jack Sawinski's double in the eighth inning to provide a valuable insurance run. When I asked Santana afterward about all that, he just shrugged and said, we believe in each other. We all believe in each other. We believe that the next guy is going to get the job done. I believe that David Bednar was going to come on and get the save. He came on and got the save. Can I tell you right now how many players in that atmosphere last year there were like this? It's it's a zero. Okay. Brian Hayes wasn't this guy. Brian Reynolds wasn't this guy. And I told you at the time that neither of them really has that type of DNA. But they also didn't have a Connor Joe, a super bright kid with all this energy and all this on-base percentage reality, not to mention the good work that he's doing out in the field. Where was that player? You know who that player was last year? Meaning on the roster? That was... Josh Van Meter or any one of those guys. That's the zero to 60 that I'm talking about. It's a different team in addition to a a different mindset. And I got to tell you, whether I'm talking to guys who are with the team through all the losing or who are brand new or even relatively new to Pittsburgh, there's no baggage in play. There's not so much as a thought invested among any of these guys that they're the pirates and they need to overcome some sort of stigma. We think that we're looking at them on TV or at the ballpark or wherever, and we're saying, well, it's the pirates. Look, it's the same logo. It's the same thing they were wearing last year. They're not. Santana's not thinking about that. Hill's not thinking about that. Velasquez isn't thinking about that. These guys weren't pirates last year. And I'm going to share with you one last thing. And this comes from a guy who was part of it and who was affected by it negatively. I had a good talk after this game yesterday with Cabrian Hayes because Hayes has had his down moments. I'm not talking about this season. He's hit the ball really well all all along. Don't pay any attention to antiquated stats like batting average. He is really stroking the ball. It's just a matter of time before it starts landing regularly the way it has over the last 10, 12 games for him. His numbers will all go up. Key would get really down over the circumstances, over the losing. And he told me yesterday uh, in no uncertain terms that this year, even when he's not gotten the results, when he's had frustrating games where he's hit the ball hard and hit it right at people, he's in that huddle doing that infield celebration with everyone else. And he, you don't even think about it. This is him saying this. You don't even think about it. How you did that day. You just think, I'm going to come back the next day and do something to help this team win. Maybe it'll be a play at third. Maybe it'll be a throw. Maybe it'll be helping a guy out with a bit of advice. Maybe it'll be one of those lasered balls off the bat landing somewhere. But I I got to tell you that the guys who have enjoyed this the most, who are the most uplifted by it, I'm going to give you the names. It's Key. It's Reynolds and it's Mitch Keller, exactly the guys you'd expect because they've been around the longest and they've been taking it the longest. They really enjoy giving it back. Not the same team. Stop worrying about the laundry. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of... Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer your gun. 
Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. This segment's brought to you by Family Table, a local company that brings delicious food to busy families. They offer family-style complete meals or a la carte items like lean proteins, perfect for muscle building and weight loss. If you aren't local, gift cards are also available for your Pittsburgh-based family and friends. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com and use the code DK20 for 20% off and free delivery on your first order. We're by noon today for Thursday delivery. Today's J1Q comes from Cody who says, DK, have you noticed the overall in-game demeanor change since last season? Uh, Back then it looked like they were attending a funeral each game. Now it's chins up, smiles, and celebration. Is this the Kutch effect? Uh, Cody, I'm happy to use this entry on a day where I started bringing up the subject in the opening segment about the changes from last year, but I'm going to repeat to you that the most significant changes that have happened is at the personnel level. There's a lot of different players on this roster. You know, maybe we should go around the diamond. You know, Austin Hedges wasn't here. Austin Hedges was part of a winner. That is a really, really good catcher who knows how to command a staff. Both of the first basemen who've been brought in replace absolutely nobody. The Pirates have been a black hole at first base for so long I can't even remember. So having Santana and G-Man Choi there once he's back, just different. They have nothing in common with anybody who was here before. Second base, we're seeing a lot of different guys there, but Rodolfo Castro is getting his first real chance. G. Juan Bay wasn't part of this team at all. Shortstop, one of those carryovers you really wish was still around would be O'Neill Cruz, but you're seeing different guys rotate in and out of there, including now to Capita Marcano. And it's been mostly a positive experience, you know, contrasted with how much better it would be if Cruz were still around. Third base is obviously Hayes. Left field is obviously Reynolds. Jack Suwinski, yeah, he was up for 240 at-bats, hit 19 home runs. Look what he's doing now. Look what Jack is doing now. Jack had stretches in 2022 where he looked like he was dead to the world. Like like not only were they going to have to send him back, but they were going to have to send him back and forget about him. And he has instead turned himself into a much more complete hitter. You know, that swing that he took on that double yesterday, that was not Jack going out of his shoes. That was not Jack trying to put the ball in the river. That was Jack trying to win the game, which he did. Jack's also walking. Remember Jack walking last year? No. Different player. Different player. Joe's in right field. I didn't even touch on the bullpen. Bullpen last year, once... David Bednar and Will Crow, who it's easy to forget now, but actually started off really well last season. Once Bednar and Crow got overused, the whole bullpen went to hell. And look at it now. It doesn't even need to get utilized that much. The Pirates lead the majors in innings pitched by their starters. Did you know that? Do you know who's the most appreciative of that? Right. The bullpen. You know who's the second most appreciative of that? The manager. All of a sudden, he looks really smart with his bullpen usage, doesn't he? Why? Because they're all good. Because they're all fresh. They didn't have any of their back-end guys available to them. The other night, what happened? Dwayne Underwood Jr. came in and was just lights out. Johan Ramirez came in with a a sinker that was so bizarre, cutting in on a guy's hands, that I was having a, a, a... uh, a fun talk with uh, both Colin Holderman and Underwood about this. They have stalls right next to each other in a room and asking them about that Ramirez pitch. And they said, they just told him, listen, kid, whatever you do, the next time you're out there, throw that pitch. That can't be hit. 
But to your actual question, uh, you know, about the smiles and so forth, it, it comes with winning. It's not the other way around. And to repeat from the opening segment, uh, it's, it's not Kutch. Kutch, what he allows you to do and what I hear from players is he allows you to walk into a stadium with your chin held a little bit higher because now you're walking in there with a player who is universally respected throughout the game. There isn't any more of that sense of, well, hey, we've got a good player, too. His name's Reynolds. It's not any of that. It's now, hey, look, we're walking behind this guy. He's leading us into this situation. And that role right there, Kutch loves. He loves being the guy. Just doesn't want to lead. Just doesn't want to do any of that meeting stuff and whatever else. He'll partake in it. But it's Santana who's making that happen. They're following Santana's literal lead. They're following Kutch's symbolic lead. Who's going to follow them now? Who's going to follow them? (laughs) Wow. What a scenario we're all talking about here, huh? They're off today. They're playing the Dodgers tomorrow night, 6.35 p.m. at PNC Park. I'll be there writing about it for DK Pittsburgh Sports. And if you haven't read my column today, I'm really mad at you. I spent a... I spent a good amount of time on that one and got a lot of good insight from the players. Go check it out. It's at the top of DKPittsburghSports.com this very morning. Let's do this again tomorrow.